to beat. Could this be the one? Do you hear all that noise Brigham's making in the background? I do. Oh, man. Kid can't get out of his own way. Are we live? We are live. So Welcome to the 2021. Oh, wait. That's a little. It only bit. feels like. We're not that live. Yeah. So, it's <clears throat> been a little bit since we've uh, done a podcast. Yeah, it's uh, September. <laughs> this is the last time we did one. We've had a lot of stuff going on. No doubt. Like, uh, one thing that you'll notice, though, is we don't have the big face guards in front of our faces. Yeah, we upgraded our microphones, our audio mixer, because I got tired of everybody complaining about my audio skills. And I'm being Lance today, and Lance is being me. It kind of evens out the uh, perspective of our podcast view. Right. Whatever. <laughs> That's a good way. To put it. We had to put some uh, phone books under Lance to get it to work. Come on. And Curtis installed some fancy lights. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, Curtis has some nerdy stuff you going on. You can see with the, the glow. Lights. Yeah. Oh, the green glow. The green glow. Yeah. yeah. We can a, change them at will. I have a question, though. How come, if I'm taller than Curtis, how come I'm the one that has to sit on his phone books? Mmm. Because I only make short jokes about you. Oh, I see. Well, technically, yeah. Brig. Brig, yeah, Brig. Brig, Brig. Brig, Brig can you hear us? Short, though. Yeah. Sounds all right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I was just, it's weird because nobody's commenting yet. Yeah. Come on, guys. Comment. Comment. So we know you're out there. Give us a thumbs up. I'm giving myself a thumbs up right there. Um, but yeah, what we, what we want to do today is just kind of uh, open it up to questions we... We want to. We have some funny stories that we've talked about <laughs> through the podcast. Um, we want to talk about that. We want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the shop, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, first of all, I got to make sure not to talk very loud. These microphones are money. Yeah, they are. They're like Joe Rogan level microphones. Oh yeah, yeah. nice. Hopefully, they filter out all of our bad words we said. <laughs> um, exactly. Right now, we're we're going through a massive change uh, as far as the website goes. So look for something what January ish. Yeah, first week of January is the time. First, first week of January, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be upgraded search capabilities, upgraded filtering, uh, easier checkout. I can hide when I say the checkout. Yeah, checkout currently suck sometimes yeah checkout can kind of suck better better customer service options like a live chat um, yep directly into Lance's yep. cell phone inbox exactly <laughs> so that's been a ton of work we're, we're upgrading a lot of images as well so that's been taking up a lot of our time plus just the, you know the, the holiday season in general for us is always a crazy busy season when yep. I say busy yeah I mean poor Kilo and the shippers the, they're always up to their ears busy, shipping busy. orders. Yeah, since Black Friday, it's been nonstop. So keep up the good work, guys. Yeah, we have we have good staff. We had Meat Fest today for also instead of a Christmas party because of the COVID's Rona. Yeah, we just kept our distance and Cheech throw threw meat at us, dude, from six feet away. Tri tip, pork belly, sh jumbo shrimp. Mm, those were good. And we all shared a $54 Wagyu New York <laughs> strip. It was awesome. Oh, so good. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, so we, we've been busy and uh, things have been going well. We've been getting a lot of comments about getting back on our podcast wagon. and So that's what we're doing, guys. Merry Christmas, Kurt, to you. And uh, glad everybody's popping on. And so now that we have more people on, what we're going to do is just kind of have an open conversation session here just to kind of talk about stuff, right? Yeah. We're, we want to entertain. I think we people like, yeah. uh, you, you like being educated and telling you how to cast those Euro nymphs or Shares. figure out that best fly line. But no. we're, we're just going to kind of chat about stuff and tell some fun stories and uh, take uh, comments for stupid pet tricks from the gallery here. Yeah, so if, if uh, for example, on the comments, in the YouTubes where you're listening to this, 
what's the funniest or craziest thing that's happened to you while fly fishing? Oh, yeah. um, as and so put those on there. We'll we'll kind of uh, look at those as we go through this. But first of all, we get asked sometimes how this all started, how yeah. the fly shop all started. I don't know if we've gone over that in depth. But there was a website called Farmers Only. Oh, no, that's a different one. No. No, but uh, so Curtis and I back, we we met when? In like 2001 or 2002? Yeah. It was yeah. early 2000s. And I, I was doing a demo at a fly shop that used to be here somewhat locally. And I, I met Curtis and a bunch of the, the dudes that, that I know now. We were on an internet forum called Utah on the Fly. Lance was there. What was your handle on that? Carp Man? Carp Man. Oh, yeah. I Carp remember man. that now. Yeah. A fun fact, a lot of people don't re realize or don't know this, but Lance used to hold most of the catch and release state records for every single species in every the state. <laughs> a few, but not every species. Now, I remember that uh, it seemed like the carp one would go back and forth, and you were fierce in the chase what's your I've what's your biggest car three card? times yeah uh, i don't remember what the longest it was all based on length not weight i i want to say that it was in the i think the largest one i had was 35 and a half or 36 inch carp somewhere in there they wouldn't i caught a grass carp one time that was 40 inches long and i turned it in because it only said carp and oh then, yeah and then they told me it wasn't a common carp and then they changed the name to common carp so it didn't count mm. jerks. jerks i know I jerks <laughs> anyway, yeah. But now I think the only one I have currently is the uh, probably the least sought after fish in all of Utah. Green, don't don't say white fish. fish. Sacramento white perch. Fish are awesome. Sacramento perch. Most people don't even know they exist. That's the only <laughs> catcher on this record I still hold. I think. Well, that's a one to uh, pursue. I yeah. Think. Oh, I pursued it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Lance was known as Carp Man back in the day. Carp Fierce man. carp chaser. If you haven't tried it on a fly rod. Highly recommended. Lots they of fun. Will, They're crazy. They'll good. kick your butt, both uh, getting them to eat the fly and then the fight. But anyway, Curtis and I kind of met uh, at a fly tying demo and just became friends. We realized we both had served religious missions in Argentina, as you guys have heard us speak Spanish on the podcast before. Yep. And uh, we go to Argentina now to, to fish a fair bit. But uh, we never really set out to open a fly shop together. No. How did that happen, Curtis? Well, we specifically at one point said, we're not going to do a blog. Because that's how this started. <laughs> we, we uh, at the time I was doing an article for the Tribune, Salt Lake Tribune, and uh, a little fly tying article every week that was in the paper. And <clears throat> I would get a lot of emails from people asking where I got certain materials, which at the time most of the materials were um, that I couldn't get locally, which was a quite a, quite a bit, were just online. So we said, "Hey, um, let's do a little blog to kind of keep track of the recipes a little bit more." Yeah, I mean, uh, I think at the time I was just tying flies for Rainies. I was a contract tire there, and the Cheech Leach had just come out, and the Grumpy Frumpy, and I was emailing the recipe and instructions out to that multiple times. Yeah, it wasn't like Curtis. I didn't have just like an automated email response generated. <laughs> so we just wanted to create a blog with with YouTube videos so we could show people. Yeah, that was how, how to do that. That was it, and that quickly turned into more of the same questions where, like, they could see the recipe but then couldn't get the stuff. Yeah, or at least it was nowhere one you know one place. Yeah. So we were creating demand. So we got brave and out of Curtis's basement with pegboard by the way if you are thinking about starting a fly shop <laughs> or organizing materials in your basement pegboard is the worst possible option absolute worst it was the worst just horrible uh, it's great for maybe uh, retail displays but mm -hmm. not for shipping anyway uh, we our first order was to hairline for 300 bucks <laughs> yeah. and it was kind of uh, a little bit nerve-wracking and then uh, we just ended up growing our material from there yeah I mean we got to the point in my basement where it was taking over my uh, food storage area 
desk, drawers, the closet. We were throwing all colors of marabou in the same bag. Then uh, moved into the garage with the legit warehousing kind of process and moved into the retail shop uh, well, a year, year and a half after that. And then we've been in this one for a little over two years. So, Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things is we... We never wanted to, to open up a fly shop because, you know, uh, where we are in Utah County, there had been a, a few shops that they couldn't quite work it out. And there was this stigma around Utah County and fly shops and success. So uh, we our first shop was originally just going to be a warehouse space. Yeah, we didn't even think we'd have a retail front. And then a real estate agent found one that, I'm like, ah, uh, well, you know, we'll do a little retail gig and split it in split half. Split it in and half, yeah. And <clears throat> went like 10,000 items in 550 square feet. Yeah, if you went to that old shop, we were good at cramming stuff in and going like cheech height on the walls with stuff. Yeah, Brig had to get a ladder and then he had to get another ladder to put it on top of that ladder to get to the top <laughs> shelf. There was a six foot and over club on that one. But yeah, um, we, we are now here in our bigger shop, like 5,500 square feet total. And, uh, but how, how long after we had our shop did, did we bring Lance aboard? What, what month did it? you open the shop? April? No, October it was October. October of 2016 was yeah. our... October, yeah. that's right, in the fall. So then, and then I came in, I started in uh, March 1 yeah. next year. So, and we've known Lance for 20 years, you know. Lance worked at Fish Tech, another really good shop in Utah that I used to work at as well. And we'd known Lance for a long time. And we just put an Instagram post out that we were looking for a full-time person. Lance emailed me and I'm thinking, "Okay, he's joking. He's he's pretty <laughs> set up at the old Cabello's." And uh anyway, it it didn't work out right then because uh we we didn't have Lance money. <laughs> no. Sure. So, no. The, the second, I remember the second that it did work out, we called Lance and we're, we're super stoked that, that he came aboard. And Yeah, it's been great ever since. It's been growing ever yeah. since. It's been a fun ride. Um, certainly learned a, a few things and uh, it's been fun kind of getting to know people and to, uh, you know, just kind of make this work. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we've we've got an awesome staff here. You know, it's a mix of younger guys. Now we just hired Paul Brockbank. A lot of you guys here in Utah that have been around fishing industry know Paul. Yeah, he's uh, fished longer than all of us combined. Uh, isn't Paul like eighty-seven or something? No, <laughs> just kidding. He's maybe, barely maybe my 57. age. Yeah, but but Paul <laughs> Paul's a, been a great addition. He's been with us only for what a week. A week today. Yeah. And we have lots of great behind the scenes guys too that are uh, yeah. all of our shippers. If you order from us online, which we do appreciate, then uh, you're getting stuff touched by Joshua, aka Kilo. Yeah. And you're getting stuff from Brig and from Ty and from Chandler. And uh, we were missing we Big were missing? B. Big B. Brandon works. Big B. It comes Fridays. Out on Fridays. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I mean. Uh, <laughs> A mix of all of those uh, people with their hands in it, and then uh, even people outside of our our core employees. We have special projects like Briggs' wife comes and helps keep the shop tidy, and she's awesome at it. I think she uses his hair as a mop. Yeah, and for those that don't know, Brig has kind of stepped up to a, let's call him a marketing rover. Yeah, marketing slash product and. Brainstorming guy. I can hear him updating his resume right now. He's, he's the young Jamie of our world. He's the young Jamie of our world. If you have a chance, go onto our site. And uh, is that Lamson Edit a reel or is that a story? It's the, a reel. A reel? Yeah, it's check out reel. the Lamson Edit that Brig did. It's yeah. pretty By killer. Reel, you mean Instagram. Instagram, Instagram reel. reel. Oh, the Lamson. Yeah. yeah. Lamps and I think repost it too, because it was that cool. Yeah, so that's that's uh, Brig, and I I'll, I will get roasted if I don't tell him that Chance helped him with that. Yeah, I think that's true. So she's a lot bigger than me, so I gotta 
tell her. I gotta make sure I give her credit. But yeah, we got a good team, and um, we're just stoked. We we can't do this alone, of course, because it's more than uh, a couple of nincompoops like us can handle. But yeah. Very Paul's good. asking if we can open a satellite shop here in San Diego. Well, the trout fishing metropolis of San Diego, I think, would be San great to Diego. live in. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is there already is a satellite shop there. It's called store.flyfishfood.com. Yeah. But... Uh, Packages go there all the time. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. Question so, about our dartboard. Question about the dartboard. I thought that was a liquor cabinet. Well, that's what? what he he's wanting to know. So is it a dartboard? Unveil. Unveil. Look at this, this isn't true of all of our employees, oh, but we're looking at yeah. three of the driest people you'll ever meet right here. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh. It's not a liquor cabinet. Oh, it's not a liquor cabinet. Yeah, we uh we're very low on the totem pole as far as uh, drinking skills. Um so but darts and Brigham usually makes me throw darts from my desk which is clear across the room that's why I always miss but he's got the killer bee darts they're little tiny ones for his little hands let's see an eight eight best throw I've done for a long time a long ways away. yeah anyway. so if you're listening to this um, you're going to need to pop onto the YouTube and take a look at our dartboard it's hanging on the back yeah, yeah absolutely I'm going to close it it's too yeah. distracting you're going to have you to take, take the dart out Oh, yeah. Uh, that might help. So a buddy in my neighborhood made this for us. His name's Sean Burgess. Got to give him a little shout-out. But And the, the dartboard is actually made out of my old fence, my old <laughs> cedar fence. We tore it down, and he came and repurposed it. Repurposed cool. it. I also have a table at my house made out of that same wood. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, so let's get down to business here. Yeah. We, got, we have some great stories in the years of fly fishing and working in a fly shop. One of my favorite ones involves uh, old Lance Egan. This is just a short one, and I don't even know if you remember this, Lance, but there was a, a kid that came in, and uh, Lance greeted him, and like friendly Lance always does. And the, kid, <laughs> the, the kids, he's like, hey, do you guys have any of Egan's Frenchies? Lance's like, oh yeah, yeah, they're they're right over here. So Lance goes and he's picking out these Frenchies, and this kid's like, man, have you ever tried this fly? This is a really great fly. And Lance's like, yeah, I've, I've fished it a few times. <laughs> I have. And uh, he's like, have you ever tried the the Euro nymphing stuff? He's like, yeah, I've, I've done that as well. <laughs> anyway, so I came screaming out of the back and embarrassed Lance. I said, hey, just so you know, this is Lance Egan. He's the one that designed that fly so the kid was kind of confused I don't know if he understood kind of how that whole process works fly yeah, design it's easy to get confused you need to get confused <laughs> I've had lots of people over the years that I had a guy one time that argued with me about the materials list for one of my patterns <laughs> how did that go uh, he was tying Frenchies and he thought that a French guy had tied it so he was saying it's. he said I don't think we're talking about the same fly. And I'm like, I think we are. You're pretty close. But uh, he said, he said, well, the one I'm talking about was tied by some French guy. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe we're not talking about the same. He's like, no, his last name's Egon. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Lance Egon. I think it's Egan. He's, that's, it's actually more Irish than French. But, you know, but he wanted to argue with me. Finally, after like going back and forth for almost 20 minutes, I said, you know, I don't normally do this, but I got to level with you. You're talking about my fly pattern, and I guarantee you these are the right materials. <laughs> he wasn't on uh, I had a similar instance. The grumpy frumpy was just out, and I was at Fish Tech, and they had just barely gotten him in the bins. And the dude comes walking through the door, and he's got literally a fishing vest on with like doodads all over it, and a waiting staff. Hmm. And he's walking into the fly shop, right? Because just so that we know he's serious. He was serious, and uh, he turns to me. He's like, "Hey, uh, I'm looking for a fly, but you guys probably don't have it." I said, "Okay, well, what's it called?" He's like, "It's called a frumpy grumpy." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I think we got that one." He's like, "No, I, you 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 don't have this fly. It's one that I got in in Vernal at Bigfoot Fly Shop." Well, I had been doing classes at Bigfoot Fly Shop earlier, and I had tied him a few dozen of them. 
I said, no, I know the fly. So I walked him over and I showed it to him in the bin. And he's like, well, no, well, that's it? How did, how did you get this? I'm like, well, let's just say this. I, I know the guy who tied the fly. I know the guy who designed it. I sleep in the same bed with him every night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the he about fell off of his waiting staff, but uh, <laughs> it was awesome. Somebody's ah, saying that our, our mics I, are I good. just adjusted your mics. Better now? Tell us if our audio is good. Anyway. Uh, Kyle Paulding, I think, is who that is. Kyle Paulding, I mean, 26. Okay, so, well, I, I gave you guys a couple of boosts. Cool. And I will talk softer on my end. Maybe I maybe we need to go fist, fist length away. I'm still anyway. very quiet, so, so I can talk louder. Sounds okay. Young Jamie says it's good. It's good. Huh. Well, um, what else? Those are those are kind of funny stories working in a fly shop. You you deal with all kinds of yeah. expertise when you have people come in where they'll be asking you questions about one fly, and then the next week they're they're the expert on it. It's great fun. Um, what else? What's the next one? Somebody asked about bodily function stories. I think we might have to pass on them. <laughs> we, we have some great ones, but they're, they're all not, they're, not YouTube they're not they're not family friendly. If, yeah. If we can't if we can't uh, get this uploaded to YouTube kids, it's probably a little bit. We have horrible. we have to um, declare that they're friendly or they're not, not intended kids. for kids. <laughs> so we'll we'll keep that kind of where it is. Lance, do you have any good guide stories? Because I have one. I guided one time. Good guide stories. Oh, not really. I not really? Lots of good guide <laughs> stories, but none that are none that are really that funny. They're, uh, they're funny to me, but they're pretty dry, generally speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I had a funny one. Uh, this is a long, long time ago. I, I'd probably take one guide trip a year, and uh, I was fishing with these two guys. Who assured me that they had fished for 20 years uh, and as we got going I realized that 20 years meant one time per year for 20 years yeah and uh, the guy was av- or adamant about his Winston fly rod and his able reel and mm-hmm. funny thing is he had a vest with like every tiny little thing hanging off of it but like nothing in his fly boxes or anything anyway so his uh one of them was fishing and uh we were fishing a bright white and pink cheech leech and they couldn't cast very well so he's casting out we we just picked the the perfect day where the there were some big brown trout that were cruising all around and chasing stuff down so he cast out not very far and a big brown trout came over and like this is like a 23 inch fish and it, it comes over and it's like looking at the fly and he sees it and he's stripping his fly too fast. So I go, kill it, kill it. You know, guide speak for stop stripping. stop doing what you're doing. So he freaks out and starts batting the water with his fly around. Just whack, whack. <laughs> he's going to kill the fish. Yeah. I said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, you, well, you told me to kill it. So anyway... That, that one, I, I was just dumbfounded. Like, what do you do? It's like, uh, you know, <laughs> are you really going to take a little tiny piece of graphite that will break if you hit a tree branch and kill a predatory fish in a river? Not likely. Needless to say, he didn't, uh, he didn't catch any streamer fish that day. But that was, that was one that I think back on. And, yeah, I, th- I think that's one of my guy career ended, ended. Started and unceremoniously stopped. you learned that day that you should have said stop stripping stop stripping and then well what if he would have misinterpreted in, in, misinterpreted that <laughs> he was stripping too well that's what i'm saying is he <laughs> he didn't know that he was stripping well, well he's helping it goes. anyway what else oh someone says world championship stories i think those were all ruled out by the committee. <laughs> so those are ruled out by the yeah. committee. <laughs> yeah, they are. Those There's are an NDA. For mature audiences only. <laughs> yeah, gracious. There's some crazy stuff, but nothing terribly uh, appropriate not. and or, again, not very funny. We have 
you know, we have fun at the World Championships, but uh, we had <clears throat> this last one in Tasmania, we had some bus mishaps where, like, the bus doors wouldn't open, so we all had to crawl in through the uh, driver's seat and jump over the driver's seat and into the bus. I posted a video of that on Facebook. We had we have all the, the croc sightings. Those are always fun because I do love my crocs. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Croc sightings are fun at uh, world championships. Otherwise, most of them are not G-rated. Right. Yes. Curtis, <laughs> Curtis and I one time almost died in a tin boat. Do you remember that? Oh, man. So... Um, we got, uh, where did we get that boat or you? Oh, so what was it? It was, I found it online for like 700 bucks. Yeah. So it was just like an 11 foot aluminum dinghy. And I was, yeah, it was, it was a V hole, but it was, was. uh, Um, but but not big water friendly. It had leaks and I was broke as a joke. So. (laughs) I ended up like texting a picture of that, or no, I it, that was before those days. I talked to my father-in-law about it, and he footed the bill. <laughs> so, anyway, so it's a joke of a boat. Yeah, and we were. Uh, it was in November. On, yeah, on a reservoir here with Ryan Barnes. Yeah, good buddy of ours. So he met on the <laughs> other side of the lake or reservoir, and we went over there to uh, meet him. And it was good weather at the time, and we were fishing on this other side, and the storm comes in, and we happened to be on the leeward side of an island. So where we were fishing at the time wasn't that bad. You know, it was windy, but there were no big rollers. And so um, we realized it was getting sketchy, and so we decided to bust it back. We had to go across the main reservoir to get over to yeah, the boat Yeah, it ramp. was bad. And as soon as we got out of that, the leeward side of that island, the Poseidon's rage unleashed on our little eleven foot boat. So let me let me back this up. The the boat had a motor that was like a nine point five horse and it was so old it was a Wards brand. Yeah. Not a Montgomery Wards. It yeah. was back back in the It was days. like from the forties or something crazy. Yeah. Maybe and not that old, but I had Jimmy rigged it enough it was to sketchy. try to get it to go and but anyway, we would get going barely fast enough, get up on top of a wave, and then we'd turn sideways. And then the and motor then, would come all the way out of the water. And stop. Oh and, yeah. And every time we're at that point, it's like, uh-oh, is this it? So you have three of you in the boat. No, no just two Ryan was in his pontoon boat. Ryan was in his pontoon. Yeah, we would have been dead if that were the yeah. case. So we, we eventually got the motor to go, and we were able to like go full throttle into the beach on a private beach. It was a rocky shore, yeah. and we had the trolling motor mounted in this wooden kind of <laughs> DIY mount on the front. And as we go in to crash, I jumped out, tried to lift the trolling motor out, So, but it still rammed into it and broke that mount. Oh, yeah. And then we had to pull the boat up, take the motor off, we had to trespass. Yeah, we had to go through some no trespassing. And uh, has it been enough years that you can talk about this? Yeah, oh yeah, the statute yeah, of limitations yeah, ran it's, out. It's on that way, one. way farther. <laughs> Plus, I it was a an all wheel drive Chevy Astro van. <laughs> oh, was, those are awesome. <laughs> we used to load that thing up oh, with man. like seven or eight guys and go out to the fish the, mobile to the, the the fancy lakes and fish. That was fun. So yeah. this lake with an island, did it start with an S and end with a field? Yep. Yeah. Interesting. S field. Strawberry field. <laughs> Strawberry, Strawberry field. field. Right. Yeah, it was like, that was bad news. Devin and I went had a similar experience there. He used to have a, uh, I don't know if it was 10 or 12 foot, probably a 12 foot John boat uh-huh. with just an electric on the back. And we launched it off the south, kind of southeast beach one time. Mm-hmm. When we launched, there were some bait anglers there in the morning. And we launched, and we went all the way across the lake to the islands as well. And we fished out there all day. And during the day, the, w- the wind got probably not like you guys are describing, because we would have died if it was that bad. But it got a little rowdy, yeah. for sure. And uh, we fished in it all day, no problem. Just fishing lock style with a drogue. And, and just about dark, we putted back across the lake. And uh, 
We get over there, and the same guy is still there fishing bait, which normally the bait dudes are there for like four or five hours max. Limit out. Right? They're gone. They're gone. Mm -hmm. He's there, and he's sitting in his truck. He doesn't even have a rod out anymore. We're just like, oh, he must have just been leaving. Just when we come into view, he comes running out of his truck. Oh, my gosh, I was worried sick about you guys. We don't even know this guy. He's being kind. <laughs> We're like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, you guys went out. I couldn't see you. And then that storm came through, and the waves got big. And I just thought for sure you guys had drowned. I was staying until if it got wow. dark and you guys didn't come, I was going to go call the sheriff. And, you know, search and rescue. And we're like, wow, that's really nice of you. And then it goes right from that. He's like, I'm glad you guys are good. Did you catch any of them tiger browns? <laughs> they just started, started putting oh. tiger trout in there. And we were like, Ti oh, it's tiger trout. Yeah, we've caught tiger browns for sure. Tiger? <laughs> so now we have the uh, tiger brown joke. We'll look for that hashtag from the social media people. Tiger brown. Tiger, tiger browns. browns. Post your best tiger brown. Tag us in your post. We'll choose the best one and we'll repost it on our Instagram <laughs> and give you a shout out. Yeah. How's that? Sounds good. So have you ever caught any of those tiger browns? I caught some tiger browns once. Maybe Sweet. twice. So. So there you go. <laughs> tiger oh, browns. Geez. Oh. So, speaking, speaking of Lance, uh, we we joke around with Lance all the time, and we, we use the hashtag on social media, that's Lance Egan right there. And we've told this story before, but. Uh, there are enough people who haven't heard the story. It's not just on Instagram. There's a filing cabinet over there that has it written in permanent marker on it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's maybe tattooable at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am a tattoo free zone. So, yeah. are you well, getting it on you? I will. I'll get it. I'll get it on my forearm, and I'll just go like this, and it will be like pointing your direction. I see. <laughs> anyway, so. We like to fish some high mountain lakes, and there, there are some of them that, that are kind of far out of the way, but definitely not secrets. And so uh, when we go fish these, typically we'll do it during the week so that we can get away from crowds and things like that. So by, one time... By a little bit out of the way, you got to build that up a little more. Oh, yeah. This, so, isn't, like, uh, this isn't like pull off the side <laughs> yeah, of the road. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you can either ruin your truck or you can get a side-by-side -side and do some pretty serious... Uh, crawling to get there. I mean, it's even it's, in a side by side. It's not yeah, easy yes, to go to. it's not. There, there are certain parts of that road where you're like, are you, are we really going to go yeah. at this? And you're at ten thousand feet. Yeah, so yeah. it's 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 out it's there, there, right? Yeah, it's a little sketchy. So I think it was a a shop trip. So we, uh, us three were were in our our side by side, and we go up the mountain, and we pull off, and you know we're getting ready to get our boats out, and you know, we turned off the side by side, and we heard another side by side coming up. And so, I'm like, okay, well, they'll they'll obviously see that we're we're fishing here, and they'll take off. We had more than us. We had us. We had Sam's vehicle up there too. Oh yeah, yeah. And Sam used to work here, and then we had Rory and Justin. Oh yeah, were there. We had quite a group. Yeah, it was all setting up. <laughs> yeah. So here we are, and we're bundled up too, like. It's it's a little bit chilly as I as I remember, mm -hmm. and anyway, so these two dudes in a razor come up. They're they're hauling butt. That's my razor sound effect. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so they have helmets on, and one of them they they don't even turn their rig off. One of them pops his head out and kind of scopes us out. We're at we're waiting for him to ask us something, and he turns to his buddies like. That's Lance Egan right there. And so we're thinking, okay, he's going to come over and talk more. No. They get back in there side by side and just take off. <laughs> yep. So Lance, like he does, turned like 18 shades of red. And we just roasted him. <laughs> All the way from across the lake. Hey, Curtis. Yeah? That's Lance Egan right there. <laughs> oh, man. And it's forever been that way. Indeed. So, yeah, well, Stories like that, you can't let them die. So if you go on Instagram and punch in that's Lance Egan right there, you'll, you'll, see you'll find quite a yeah. few hashtags. At least three or four. <laughs> yeah. Brandon, Brandon Minna commented, this is a good one, because uh, we fished with uh, Josh Kilo. <laughs> First time we fished with Josh, we, were, we did like a, a camp where we cooked a bunch of meat. <laughs> and we didn't really know Kilo as well. We yeah, we hadn't that. gone out with him fishing as much or... But, yeah. you know, talk about the quiet guy that sits and makes one-liners. just kept us laughing <laughs> so much. 
I think even Kelly Barnes was on that trip, right? Yeah. I think we so had the, the opening. We just let anyone go on that one. Yeah. Joker. <laughs> we'll send you all the GPS coordinates and you can join us. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so that's that's the Lance Egan story right there. So much fun. Yeah. What and about I, Bigfoot stories? Bigfoot stories? What about... I, I'm telling stories right now. I... But I... I'm a... That's a bad joke. So, someone says, "Wait, who's Lance Lance Egan?" That's good. That's Trout Howler. Who's Trout Howler? That's the question. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trout Howler. Yeah. Who is that guy? I don't know. I heard that he likes to fish scuds on Scott Rods. <laughs> check him out on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, we have a lot of uh, Bigfoot videos that we just don't share with people. Right. <laughs> yeah, we have a dog named Squatch here in the shop. Yeah. The old Squatch dog. She looked she, up when you said her name. Yeah, she's chilling in her kennel right now. Yeah. Just hanging out with us. Here's another story. I feel like I'm telling too many stories. Well, how about this, Lance? You you brought a funny one up. Our, our good buddy Al. Al? Big Al? Big Al. Speaking of Sasquatches. There's another Squatch. So Big Al's about my size, but a lot more fit and doesn't weigh as much as me. But he's a big dude. So yeah. keep that in mind as you listen to this. He's a big dude. Big Al, you want me to tell the Big Al story? Well, we were carp fishing, and uh, we are wade fishing. And we'd been around this lake a couple times, and it, it, it's a reservoir, so it had been drawn down from uh, summertime releases out of the dam. So... Uh, there were some mud flats and some washes and things that had a lot of silt in them. And so, you know, as long story short, we'd been fishing along and he, we just kind of, you know, bunny hop each other all throughout the day looking for carp. And I'm at this point walking in front of Alex and, uh, we, let's see, I go through a wash, you know, keep in mind, I'm about 5'11", uh, but at the time I weighed about 155 pounds. 235. I do declare that you do need a diet, Lance Egan. <laughs> I don't weigh 235 more than now. Carrot. He's I'm been all eating. the way up to the uh, weight of 170, which I'm not very proud of. I need to get I need to get down a few pounds, but anyhow. Chill out on those Little Debbie cakes. I don't eat Little Debbie cakes. I'm going to eat Ugh. those carrots that Peter Steen brought me. Those are delicious. <laughs> anyway. anyway. So, at the time, I weighed a little less than I do now, but I have about a size 11 shoe and 155 pounds, so I'm basically the equivalent of wearing snowshoes most of the time, right? (laughs) So, I go through the mud, I go through this little wash, and I get mud up to maybe almost to my knees, no big deal. Alex is like 6'5", 6'6", and maybe, I don't know what Alex weighs, I don't want to, you know, let's just say he's a little lighter than this fellow who I left, but not very much. If you had a pocket full of Benjamins, you would need to give me three of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's probably, he's probably, he was at the time, he's not so much now, but he was probably in the high twos, let's say. And I think Al wears about a size 13 shoe, so a bigger foot than mine, but relative weight to displacement, not so much. So Big Al goes through the same wash and uh, quickly sinks up to about his thighs (laughs) and realizes he's basically in quick mud, right? And I kind of snicker and laugh, and we had another buddy there with us too. And he starts shimmying back and forth. Big Al's a strong dude. He just starts moving, and he's sinking more and more and more. Oh. He's up to his waist in seconds, and we're like, and then he stops. As long as he doesn't move, he's not sinking more. But if he keeps moving, he's sinking. And I'm like, wow, that, this is <laughs> escalating quickly. And uh, so I'm like, here, let me give you a hand. So I start walking back in there, and then I realize that I'm going to get stuck if I... I did well because I just kept moving in it, and as soon as you stop in it, you just start sinking in. So I'm like, I can't get to you. (laughs) So we try and figure out what to do, right? Long story short, uh, we go back to my buddy's... other buddy's vehicle, and Mark is his name, and we get... uh, Mark has a uh, shovel, so we get a shovel, and we go and hand Alex the shovel, and then... We watch him for about two minutes, and then we're like, well, this isn't any fun. So I start meandering down the bank looking for carp again, and I get out around a point, and I'm just about out of sight, and Alex gets this, like, I don't want to yell on the mic, but he's yelling at me, hey, you know, where are you going? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm just going looking for carp. He's like, I want to die right here. Where are you? Don't get out of sight. I'm like, no, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. So I come back, and I'm watching him shovel, and he's shoveling out in front of himself, 
and he's throwing a lot of a lot of mud around but as he shovels out in front of him the weight from behind him all the mud is buckling his knees so he's getting deeper and deeper <laughs> oh. at this point he's basically waist deep almost up to his belly button and uh, he's not getting anywhere so then we're like well we got to try and help him get out of here so we go back to the trucks and we find a tow strap and we get the tow strap and we hand it to Alex and the two of other guys try and grab him and just like pull him out but he's just not he's not moving anywhere so then it's down on this big flat and we end up pulling my buddy's truck out on the flat and there's a we're in, it's a wash so there's a little bit of a drop so we get the truck down to where the front two tires are on the top of the drop off and the back tires are down in the wash a little bit and the tow strap is around Alex actually no he's just holding on to it at this point he's holding on to the tow strap my buddy starts trying to give it gas and he can't pull him out so then we reestablish with the we get the uh, the tow strap and we kind of create a harness and we wrap that wrap that around Alex. Then my buddy starts to give it a little gas and he eases into it and all of a sudden his truck gets stuck. So then I go up and get my truck, get the tow strap off Alex, pull the other truck out and then try drop my truck down at a different angle with the same tow strap and we try just having him hold on to it again and he gets to where I'm, I'm getting grip in my truck but he's pulling it's pulling him so hard it's gonna like pull his shoulders out of the sockets yeah so he's like stop I can't hold on anymore so then we get the, the harness basically rebuilt and uh, we get my buddy Mark had a, a carpet that he uses to put like waders and boots on, on the back of his truck so we stick the carpet that we now call the magic carpet stick the carpet in front of Alex get the uh, the toe strap all around him like a harness and then we get him hooked up, hook it up to my hitch, and I start giving it a little gas. Got my window down, and Alex, this is, keep in mind, he's been in the mud. He's now, he's got waders on, and he's, he's up to, like, the top of his waders. So he's almost, like, chest deep in mud. And he's, like, digging around, trying to get the harness around him. We're basically, we're probably 15 minutes from calling the sheriff and having a helicopter drop the harness <laughs> down and pull him out like a, like a stuck Classic. moose. Right? So... I get my truck, we get it down, back wheels on the in the in the wash, front tires up on the edge, and I start I've got it four low and I just start trying to crawl it out of there and all of a sudden I hear this like pop noise <laughs> and I'm when my window's down, Alex starts screaming at me, floor it, floor it, floor it and I just drag him up the bank on this carpet <laughs> to safety. <laughs> And his waders are never the same because he had mud inside them and outside them. Uh, I, to this day, I have a there's a picture in my house of Alex <coughs> standing up to here in mud. He's tall. I mean, he's not. A, he's six yeah. five, six six, and he's got his arms crossed because he's pissed at me because I'm taking pictures. <laughs> but there's nothing he could do about it. So I've got a, I've got pictures of it. It's a it's a pretty funny story. We did get him out safely. Uh, in fact, that story is in a fly fishing book. I think Chris, Chris Santella made a like 50 greatest guide stories or fly fishing stories or something like that. And it's in a fly fishing book, that, that story, if you want to read it in a little more depth. But it was a fun one. I, uh, after that, he gained, he gained the uh, moniker the Mud Dauber. He's, <laughs> he's now the Mud Dauber, Big Al. Oh, dude. And he still fishes with you after that. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, oh, man. he's generous. Yeah, Big Al's a good dude. <laughs> he is a good that's, dude. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you gotta have sympathy for the big guys. The fly fishing world isn't necessarily built for Sasquatches. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, old Big Al. That's a funny one. Speaking of being big, I have a story where Curtis was just. <laughs> Cur if you know Curtis, Curtis is very engineer. It's either black or white. <laughs> I'm more of the artist. So, uh, anyway, long story short, we. Uh, we have this lake that we hike up into, and and it's pretty know, steep. It's for, a pretty steep hike. It's you know, not very long, but I mean, I, I I'm really good at getting winded on on hikes. So <laughs> I take a lot of breaks. Is this the lake that I went to you with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a different time. So, so it's, it's yeah. It's Lance is going to say it's not that bad, <laughs> but for uh, a big fat guy, no, I was I was taking lots of breaks. So we're we're going up the the hill and. You know, I'm, I'm taking breaks, and Curtis would kind of wander up, and he was nice enough to wait around to make sure I didn't keel over dead with a heart attack. But anyway, about four or five breaks in, Curtis is ready to go up and catch fish. I, I get up to him, and I'm he's just, you know, sitting there ready to take off, and I'm just barely breathing. And he just kind of walks over, and without even thinking, he's like, hey, uh, 
is this the biggest you've ever been? <laughs> and I just look at him and I'm like, I don't even that? remember. That. I mean, you you mentioned it after the fact, yeah. and I was like, oh. I had to I had to tell Curtis as if as if it's a story because I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm thinking that yeah probably and he's like oh okay he's eating freaking trail mix and drinking water and off he goes do 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 anyway it's the so, biggest you've ever been yeah man probably yeah, probably yeah I, hand me another Snickers yeah, hand me another. got any little dummies I think after I got down the mountain I I ran out of water up there and I think I. I drank like eight bottles of water when we got back down. That was the time we found. Was that the time we found all the fish that were people were snagging in with Panther Martins? No, that was the other time when Lance that was, was there. Time. Yeah, that was the yeah. It seems to be a problem up there. I've seen it in a couple of ways now. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. brutal. No doubt. Yeah, if you can't catch them, snag them. Right, that's how they did it. We we'd go up there and see fish swimming around with Panther Martins. Yeah. hanging out of them and guts everywhere and it's a it's a no no kill zone yeah nice fish or at least were they were yeah, yeah. anyway yeah that's my fat story <laughs> and so we've we've avoided that lake for a little while no mostly because the fishing has has gone downhill what else I've got one. Jeff Denning asked if you ever hooked any non-fish. Ah, uh, good question. I've yeah. hooked some non-fish before. I've got two good bird stories. I don't know if we have time for both, but one I was in Mexico, saltwater fly fishing, and we're throwing bait out to get the game fish to come up and eat. And uh, I'm throwing pretty long casts out there. And uh, long story short, I uh, I start stripping my fly, and there's a pelican in the air, and it dive bombs my fly. Pelican eats my fly, hook it in the mouth, in the bill, let's call it, <laughs> and then I fight it on a nine weight all the way back to the boat. Uh, it pelican. Gets, pelican. It gets oh. to the boat, and the native, or the native guide, you know, speaks broken English, starts cursing at me, and uh, he goes to try and get the hook out of the pelican. He's like, you, you know, you want your fly? I'm like, yeah, if we can get it, you know. So he goes to take it out and the pelican snaps its feet like tries to bite it they're aggressive for them to get close I, I didn't know I guess they're really dangerous well, they're the size of a small boat they're swagger. huge they're almost the size of Brigham <laughs> Brig, Brig's gone we can't make can't fun make of fun him anymore yeah. too late. anyway the thing you know snaps its beak at him he reaches in there again and does the same thing he's like I don't know what to do and I'm like, cut it off if you got to you know and you go, he's like one more he's like you know one more minute I'm like, okay, so he gets this little rag, and the dude, the guy gets his, let's see, he had, it was on his left hand, so he gets the rag in his left hand, and in the right hand, he starts shaking like this, and he starts to get the bird's attention, the bird's turned towards him now, looking at this hand, he gets this one closer and closer, and he slowly moves the hand with the rag towards it, and then when they get about equal distance, he grabs the pelican with the ragged hand around the beak, and then the, the bird just thrashes like crazy. <laughs> Throws water all over the place, and he's cursing like crazy at this bird. And finally, the bird settles down. He's able to grab the fly, pop it out, let it go, and the bird immediately, rather than flying away, the pelican turns, looks at us, and you know paddles away with its feet rather than flying but it doesn't take its eyes off of us in the boat for like a hundred yards just <laughs> just staring at Death down stare. the whole time Jeez. good old pelicans yeah well i i hooked a, a person one time that this was uh back in the day this is like the last time that uh my wife tried to set up a trip with one of her friend's husbands. Do you, do that, that always works out. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Maria, if you're watching this, I love you. And I'm going to tell this that. story because I'm 100% confident that the dude that this happened to is probably playing Dungeons and Dragons somewhere. No, <laughs> no, no offense. It's, a, it's an awesome game. It's a great game. Anyway, so he wanted to go fishing and he kept bugging me, bugging me, and then he finally asked my wife, and she's like, oh, yeah, he, he goes all the time. He'll <laughs> just go him. with him. And it was January, right? So he was adamant that he wanted to go fishing in January. So he had some old waders, and they were all too tight. I knew he was going to freeze, and I just told him. And it was a midge hatch time, like size 28 midges. 
I said, whatever you do, don't stand behind someone who's casting. Like the guy's never, I don't know if he had ever fished, let alone fly fished. I said, just don't stand behind me if I'm casting. I won't stand behind you. That's kind of the general rule of fly fishing. He's like, okay. The fish hooks freak me out, though. He's like, I there's nothing worse than than getting hooked by a fish hook. He's like, I've just heard stories that it's really painful. I'm like, <laughs> okay, but this is what we're using. Give it a shot. Him. Yeah. So anyway, about 15 minutes in, I think he realized that fly fishing was not going to be his forte. He was <laughs> not going to be asked to be on as many pro staffs as I am because I'm a freaking pro. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm anyway, so... He, uh, you know, about 15, 20 minutes into the day, I'm casting, I'm, oh, I see a fish, and I lose track of this dude. I don't know where he is. And he's wearing a trench coat, by the way, and like an Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm casting, and on my forward cast, I just go, Zzz! <laughs> it just stops. And I hear this scream, like a scream like I've never heard before. You know how, like, like on Home Alone, when the spider lands on the dude's face and he screams like a girl. <laughs> yes. That's my favorite part of the movie. It was like that. So I look back and I'm thinking that the guy found a rattlesnake in January and it was gnawing on his nose. No. I had placed a size 28 bunny midge into his cheek and he was screaming bloody murder. And it was barbless. <laughs> so I walk back there and he's like, you hooked me. You, I told you that this was like my worst fear. Like I'm like, oh. So I just took the fly and popped it out. He's like, I think we need to go to the doctor. I'm like, dude, the fly's out. He's like, yeah, but I'm bleeding. So, anyway, well, so you was, punched him in the face. I punched him said, in the face. said, I'll give you something to cry about. I said, listen, Brigham. I mean, <laughs> wait, it wasn't Brigham that time. But anyway, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I I think I've hooked both of you on the same trip. I got one time, uh, one time on the Stillwater this year. I got each shoulder by different shoulder yeah. by each of you in the same trip. Yeah. Right oh shoulder, man. Left shoulder. That worked out good. Even, oh, on, really good. even on a twenty foot boat, he's still he's in still the boat. Got him. Got him. Anyway, so but that that reminds me, you should look up different ways to remove fish hooks. Yeah, that's um, a lifesaver. I remember. Going down the Provo River one time, I I heard similar screaming in the bushes, and I come around the corner, and there's like two emo kids fly fishing, and one of them had a print snip stuck in his finger. And granted, it was deep, right? Yeah. And they're screaming at us, like flagging us over like we're life flight or something, right? <laughs> so I pull over, and he's like, do you have any, what did he say, do you have any uh, metal cutters, or do you have any... Whatever. Wire cutters. Wire cutters. And I said, well, what do you, you have a fish hook in you. If you do, I can take it out. So I walk over there, and I had some paracord. So I took it, and I did the trick where you wrap it around the bend of the hook, and pull, pull the eye down, and just yank it out. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, this kid, if, if he's freaking out this much, I'm, I'm not even going to tell him what I'm doing. <laughs> no. So I'm like, okay, this is a trick. And I said, this this works every time. I do it all the time. I had never done never. it before. <laughs> so I, I'm like, okay, what you do is I'm going to wrap this around your finger. And what I'm going to do, I said, just, just kind of hold the eye down. And I, I said, he's like, well, what are you going to do with that? I'm like, well, check that out over there. So he turns his head, and I just yanked it as hard as I could. <laughs> Whack! And he starts swearing at me. He's like, what did you do, Mom? So I'm like, oh, I just took your hook out, you know. So he looked at his finger, and he was he was actually mad because I heard it. But <laughs> off he went fishing. Him. I think uh, they probably caught fish that day too. Just Great one fun. sucker. Anyway, oh man, stories. <laughs> we do. Kelly Barnes knows some of our stories. There is a funny ambient story in there. <laughs> I can't tell it, oh, dude. <laughs> I, I can tell this one too. Because when I go camping, my secret weapon is I take a, an ambient so I can go to sleep. <laughs> crying out loud. Oh, yeah. So, another one of those trips, we had a base camp with old Jake Taylor. <laughs> and uh, Jake and I were just, we were sleeping in an, in, an enclosed. Yeah, that's where his trailer. side by side was. Yeah, yeah so. Was... And Curtis had a cot. And Man, that cot. Up. And so. So nice. Curtis is out, you know, I don't know, 20 feet away from the trailer. Yeah. Sleeping out under the stars. 
living the good life, right? <laughs> well, it's like, I don't know, one thirty in the morning. And we're, Jake and I are done chatting and we're ready to go to sleep. And Curtis loves The Office. You've seen those episodes <laughs> how many times? Every season. Oh, yeah. Hundreds Too of many times. times. Anyway, so Curtis had taken an Ambien and he was watching The Office to, to fall asleep or whatever on his phone. <laughs> and it's like 1.30 and I'm, I yell out the trailer, I'm like, hey, Curtis. And no response. I'm like, Curtis. Turn off your phone. So I'm getting mean at this phone. Like, hey, Curtis. No response. I'm like, oh crap. What if he like died and dropped his phone? So I get out barefoot. It's cold, and I go over there, and Curtis is laying on his back. He's got a death grip on his phone. I first checked to see that you were breathing, and you were, and they were like, like vapor snot. <laughs> Throw <laughs> icicles on your on your goatee. Well, anyway, I had to pry the phone out of your hands and turn off your phone. And you 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 have like a a death grip on it, like in front of your face still. But he was totally out, zombified. And anyway, I had to take his phone out of his hand, put it in your sleeping bag. But the other half of the story is, as I was falling asleep, I kept seeing this red light. Over at the trailer, you were shining a flashlight or something. That I don't remember you yelling at me. I think you were high. <laughs> the next, but I was I was zonked. So in Wishful the thinking. in the morning, in the morning, I wake up, and the, my first thought was, "What the heck happened to my phone?" And, and I don't know. I would have remembered that, and and I'm like, "That's weird." And I look down, it's it's in my bag, and I see these big feet prints leading back away from my cot and my first thought was like somebody snuck into our camp and took stuff <laughs> anyway so oh. we just make sure that Curtis turns his phone off before yeah. the, the camping secret <laughs> oh geez one guy's asking if, if you've ever had any bad or rude clients on a guiding trip Lance and how you handle that nah not really most of my clients are pretty awesome that's one thing about your gig that I think is super cool is usually the people who get you to guide them or they, they kind of know what they're getting into just more than just a, a never ever fly fish trip. Yeah, I don't really ever take beginners. Yeah, that's and that's good. Still, yeah. uh, there's always different there's personalities, always, yeah. but by and large, not really. Most yeah, of them are awesome. that's good. Anyway, oh man, now I'm all fired up. Fired up. We're coming up. I don't, on yeah, it. we're only. It's been an hour. Holy it's moly! Been an hour. Hey guys, has the audio worked out okay? Yeah, I think this is coming on the audio. I think, I think uh, it's fairly a bad. success. But um, someone asked, "What's new for 2021?" Um, just more of the same. Um, at, if you've noticed, we've kind of uh, slowed down on our video or tutorial release stuff so we have a different strategy on getting actual enough materials to release stuff we're working with vendors so you, you should see better supply chain for the videos that we yeah. release it's uh, the biggest challenge this year besides delays and shipping things it's been harder to get stuff for sure but um, like we need in some cases a few hundred of a certain item to do a tutorial and we just can't get that many of, of in, in a lot of cases at least yeah. we can't get it in short notice so I mean we used to f kind of fly by the seat of our pants we'd sit around and, and uh, do a video and release it and you know you'd be okay with uh, 5 to 10 or 20 of, of an item anyway so we've got uh, several hundred of we literally a lot, have like three pillows worth of cinnamon ice dub over there. Yeah, we're uh, we're stocking up so that when we drop videos that uh, they're they're, they're going to have some traction for you. So we don't like it any more than you do where you go to a video and stuff sold out. But one good thing about uh, we do move to our new web platform, our videos and all of the stuff in the store, if you want to buy stuff, is all going to be combined into one. Yeah. So you can be watching a video and add stuff directly to your cart without leaving the video um, right there. So it'll, it'll be pretty slick. Like Cheech said, it's infinitely easier to search 
filtering. Um, the other thing that's going to be cool is say you're on a on a fly tutorial page and we're all out of hook X. Yeah, it's going to show you like three or four other alternate hooks that are going to work just yeah. as well for the fly. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah. So we're uh, we've got actually I don't know how many thirty videos planned and. A lot of these videos we're working with, uh, for instance, Umqua, mm -hmm. Fulling Mill, um, and uh, we'll have kind of simultaneous releases with when the flies are released, at least new flies, like Lance has some new flies, and uh, you know other other guys too that we're just going to uh, do tutorials for that stuff and get, if people don't tie, they can buy the flies if they like them, and you know, kind of a one-stop shop there, so. You you guys just tie flies that are fancy, fun to look at. Nope. They don't catch fish. No, just fishermen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but yeah, we're we're going to continue on with that. Um, and just as always, check out our our site, uh, flyfishfood.com, store.flyfishfood.com, which will eventually just turn into flyfishfood.com, yep. as Curtis was saying. On Instagram, Facebook. On Facebook, we have a group called Fly Tying with Uncle Cheech. Go and uh, join that group. We'll add you in, say that you heard it on the podcast, and we'll give you a 20% discount on absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to share stuff. Um, Make sure you answer the membership questions. Yeah, answer the membership questions. They're pretty easy. They're it's, very easy. All that's, that's there for so we don't get people in the group that try to sell you fake Oakleys. Like, I think we had to kick Brigham out the other day for that. Well, you has to always, sell something. Let's get those white framed ones. <laughs> exactly. The other thing is subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for the notifications, and if you can, go to Google and give us a five star review because uh, we like those. We like those. We like five star reviews. And even for the people that gave us a thumbs down on our podcast tonight, we're the, down to one. We had two. Oh, no, we only had one. the nice thing is those do help us as well. Yeah, so it's just engagement. It's engagement. YouTube doesn't care. <laughs> there are a few, a few like we'll post like a ten minute video, and within thirty seconds of the video Downs. going live, we have a thumbs down. <laughs> well, guess what? We appreciate you following us so closely <laughs> that you can give us the thumbs oh. down. Before you even every have a little chance. bit helps. Yeah. So yeah, and, and yeah. YouTube looks at thumbs up, thumbs down as the same thing. So yeah. we appreciate you, Mister Thumbs Down. Appreciate you. But don't give us a thumbs down. Give us a thumbs up. In fact, yeah. match the thumbs up right now. We're gonna do more videos this year. We're gonna more tie content. more flies. Yeah, we're gonna be busy. We've got. Uh, we're set up to do more filming. More fishing, filming tips and tricks and tying and you name it. So, and with our new dog training series. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else, Lance? I, I think we're out of time. We're uh, we're over an hour. You heard it, <clears throat> Uncle Lance has spoken. We've got more stories for next time. More stories for next time. Yeah, so we'll we'll try to keep the momentum rolling with the podcasts. What everybody. is wrong with your mouse? I just realized this. This first. is a carpal tunnel mouse. Oh my gosh. See? That way I it's sideways. I know some medication you could take for that, but I can't say what it is on the podcast. Oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Lance knows too. I anyway, know. <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in. Um, and if you're still listening to this, no, this is not live anymore. Not in about three seconds. Two. Peace out. One. Oh, man, let's get hot.